Hello, this is Joe Crespo. I'm a director of accounts at Atten Design Group. Uh, we're going to get started with the webinar. I just want to first start by thanking everyone for making time to be here. Uh, this is our maiden voyage of the webinar series. We are hoping to uh, uh, bring the conference home to, to you since we can't go to the conferences this uh, spring. Um, we're really excited to kick this off. And I guess uh, without uh, further ado, we're just going to uh, uh, we'll start sharing our uh, screen and uh, get into uh, the presentation. Um, if there's any, if there are any issues, if you have any difficulty seeing our screen uh, from where you are, please raise your hand. Uh, there is a uh, there is a functionality in Zoom to do just that, and I will uh, follow up with you. Um, okay, let's uh, get started. I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name again. My name is Joe Craspo. I'm director of accounts at Atten. I've been with Atten for about seven years, and my background is as developer and project manager. And now I do business development at Atten. Atten's been around for about 20 years. Uh, we provide we're a full service digital agency. We provide strategy, design, and development for mission driven organizations. Um, yeah, we started with the premise that some stories just need to be heard, and our job is to help amplify the voices that need to be heard. And today we work with some of the most amazing mission-driven organizations in the world doing work that matters. I am getting a note that the screen share is not working. Um, is that, uh, I will follow up. If, is there anyone else, if, if anyone else is having an issue with the, with the screen share, will you please, uh, Mention it in the chat. Otherwise, I will follow up. Ah. Uh, so, if you are seeing a uh, a tiny box, and let me stop my video, and then that way we can. Uh, that might be a better solution. And again, thank you very much, everybody, for being here at the first webinar. Uh, in any event, uh, we work with a mission-driven organization doing work that matters. That's enough about me. That's enough about Atten. I'm going to pass this over to Michaela. <laughs> now we just see my picture. Fantastic. Okay. Let's try this again. So, Michaela, can you um are you are you able to share your screen where you are one more time? Ah. If you are seeing the screen share as a small item and my picture as a large item, uh, that's great. But if you click on the screen share, it should uh, it should go full screen. Okay, great. Thank you very much, uh, Amy, Christy, and Rachel. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so if we go back to the sharing screen, I'm going to go to. Uh, uh, so we have Michaela uh, joining us today to talk about accessibility. She is uh, Atten's accessibility expert, accessibility lead, and she'll be talking about uh, creating accessible PDFs. If at any time during the uh, presentation you have a question, please use the Q&A uh, feature at the bottom of the Zoom window to uh, post your question, and I will make sure that, uh, that they are posed to uh, Michaela later in, during the webinar. And so without further ado, Michaela, take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Joe, for sending us along. Um, as Joe mentioned, my name is Michaela Blackham. I'm a front end developer as well as the resident accessibility expert here at Atten Design Group. And welcome to today's talk. We'll be going a little more in depth about accessibility and PDFs, as well as creating, evaluating, and enhancing PDFs using Microsoft Word as well as Adobe Acrobat Pro. But before we dive in, I want to know a little bit more about you all. So I have a few questions for y'all to answer through a few quick polls, if you don't mind. The first question is, what's your skill level with digital or print accessibility? Joe, do you mind starting that poll for us, please? And there's one answer, obviously you can choose between beginner, intermediate, and expert, and don't be afraid, embarrassed, or anything of that sort. No one else is gonna see who, what you're choosing, it's all anonymous, but this will help dictate kind of what we're talking about here, and maybe what kind of questions we might be having later on. Awesome. So I just got the, um, the results back and it looks like most of you all are beginners and that's wonderful. You're going to learn a lot today. We also have some intermediate and experts and that's great because you, I'm hoping you'll still learn a little bit while also we may be able to get some resources from you as well. 
The next question is, does your organization use PDFs regularly or are you using any other formats? Here, if you're using PDFs, you can choose yes or no. However, if you are using any of other formats, just other or even just drop it in the chat to let us know if there are other formats being used. It looks like most participants today are definitely using PDFs pretty often. There's a few other options in there as well, and we can go over those a little bit later. Our last question that we have here is, what do you hope to learn from today's webinar? Joe, do you mind starting this poll as well? Thank you. So with this one, you can choose as many or as little options as you'd like, or if you have other things in here, feel free to include that. And Joe, if there's any particular ones included in the chat, please let me know what those are. Please and thank you. You bet, you bet. And I want to thank everybody for getting the votes in so quickly. This is fantastic. We were super concerned about uh, dead air uh, when we were asking the polling questions. So thank you all for uh, participating. So it looks like everyone here is for is here for pretty much the same reason. We all want to enhance our PDFs for accessibility. We do have um, other formats that we could be using, as well as the downfalls. And there look like there are a couple other options. Um, Joe, are there anything in the chat regarding that, or is that just an overall other as well? Just to see. What we sure. Uh, one one attendee wrote uh, Google Docs that they, they use Google Docs for uh, uh, documentation. Awesome. Okay, we can definitely touch upon that maybe in the Q&A section towards the end of the presentation. So that's great. Now that we know kind of what everybody's skill level is and what everyone's looking for, we can talk about what this webinar is going to be about. So we're going to go over some of the cons to using PDFs. We're going to talk about some alternative formats to PDFs, as well as an accessible PDF overview. We'll work on creating PDFs from the beginning using Microsoft Word. And then we'll also evaluate and repair a PDF using Adobe Acrobat Pro. But before we really begin, I want to just talk a little bit about myself. I started my career in the web industry originally as an interactive designer before I moved into the development world full time a few years ago. And ever since I can remember, interaction, ease of use, great organization, and accessibility have always been something that was pretty important to me. I grew up with a cousin my age with Duchenne muscular dystrophy and watched how she was able to do her homework, navigate the internet, or even just listen to music on her iPod, all with little to no mobility and difficulty speaking loud enough for talk to type programs like Dragon or Siri. Sometimes she had to get very creative, but most of the time she had to ask for help, which I know frustrated her immensely. And I always wanted to relieve her of that stress. So I slowly got involved with accessibility through the years. Today, I am now part of a number of accessibility groups around Denver, completed the Web AIM accessibility training in Utah, as well as speak at a number of engagements on the topic. And that brings us to why we're here at this webinar today. For over a decade, PDF files have been a popular and convenient way to deliver print documents online. However, they remain a challenge to make truly accessible for all users. So let's talk a little bit about PDFs and accessibility. Before we dive in how to fix PDFs, I want everyone to know that, well, there are a number of reasons why a PDF may not be the best fit for your content. I want to go over some of these reasons it may not be a good fit, go over some of the alternatives we should use instead of a PDF, as well as focus on what we need to do when we have to use PDFs. Because, well, PDFs aren't going away anytime soon. There are a number of alternative formats, but I know that your organization may not have the time, the resources, or the knowledge to move forward with creating various forms of content for your site. So our goal today isn't necessarily to fix PDFs completely, but to make you more aware of the files you are putting on your site and how to enhance the usability and experience of these files for all users. So let's talk about why PDFs aren't very accessible. PDF documents are usually formatted to be printed vertically, but computer monitors are generally horizontal. This mismatch causes users to scroll more often than on a website, which can be difficult for users with mobility impairments. PDFs are completely unresponsive. There is absolutely no reflow depending on screen size. This is great to keep pages consistent, but can create major hurdles 
for a number of users with mobility or cognitive impairments. Zooming in and scrolling back and forth can be difficult for anyone, and a user can easily lose their spot in the content. PDFs consisting of scanned pages are really just a series of images and therefore completely inaccessible to screen readers. Ideally, a PDF should be read like a web page and filled with actual text. The process of repairing PDF files is currently both time consuming and can lead to inconsistent results. Training and plugins are required to make PDF content accessible more so than other formats. And in order to even repair these PDFs, developers and content editors require expensive software, such as the fully paid version of Adobe Acrobat to evaluate, enhance, and repair these PDF files. And finally, screen readers can only use proprietary software to even successfully-ish, kind of somewhat, a little bit, read the PDF correctly. So now I bet you're thinking, wow, PDFs seem like a terrible idea. What can I use instead? And what I want you to remember is that PDFs really aren't the worst, but depending on your content, there may be alternatives that could be a better fit. Just remember, there is no format that is 100% accessible. Nothing will guarantee a catch-all, and you need to use your best judgment when creating content. But I think recognizing that your content is important and understanding how it will be read to the user will help you make the necessary steps for usability. So let's talk about some of the other options out there. Some of the other options out there are things like plain text, HTML, EPUB 3, or even a native document. Plain text is technically an alternative to a PDF. However, it isn't something many of us probably use in our day to day. Because plain text means just what it says, it's plain text, it means there are no headings, there's no structure, there's no links, there's no lists, or any other kind of semantic markup for a user to scan and navigate easily. I'm not going to go too deep into this one because I don't think we are using this often enough, but it can be a great way to showcase short bursts of information if needed. Most likely though, if you're thinking about using plain text, it should probably just be HTML on your website. One thing I like others to ask themselves when creating a PDF is, can this just be a normal web page instead? Basically, does this have to be a PDF? Are you forcing it? Should it just be a page on your website? What's the benefit of it being a PDF? Are you just worried that your user won't have a physical, printed, downloadable copy? So there's really two things I'd like to focus on with HTML. Web accessibility has the strictest guidelines out of all the formats. So if you are following WCAG or 508 guidelines already, this is probably your best choice for content. But remember, it's up to your team of designers, developers, and content editors to implement this correctly to begin with. And are you worried about not being able to have a physical copy of your content that a user can download? Well, we should be focusing on our print style sheets, something I'm sure many of us have, haven't thought about in years or never even thought about. But ideally, we should have a simple, simple style sheet that when a page is printed, it streamlines the content, it gets rid of videos, it removes the site's header and footer, gets rid of redundant content, or maybe an embedded Twitter feed. But I do know that not all content can work on a web page. Maybe it's too long, maybe it's too intricate, maybe it's something like a book. And if that's the case, then EPUB is probably your best bet. There is a lot of information currently regarding the EPUB 3 world, but some of my favorite reasons this could work for your content is because, well, readability. As mentioned, PDFs do not have that type of reflow or on various devices similar to responsive pages. EPUBs can work with the user on the various devices and create a great experience for everyone. It's constantly being updated. PDFs have been around for a very long time and haven't had any major changes into their format or anything in years. EPUBs are based off of HTML and CSS, and as you have heard, HTML is able to create the structure and flow of a screen reader user expects to properly scan and understand content. But what if your content is a bunch of super detailed tables or graphs or anything of that sort? We all know tables are horrendous to work with on a web page, but sometimes it's needed. If that's the case, then maybe a native document is your best choice. Now, I do want to take a step back on this one a little bit. I'm not saying to attach any native document to your website, as some could be absolutely terrible to work with, and they're not accessible at all. But if you're using complicated tables, graphs, and other forms of data, perhaps including a downloadable Excel sheet is your best bet. 
I say Excel is my example because Microsoft is leading the way in working with assistive technologies in their software. So then, I don't know, when do we even use a PDF then? Well, PDFs are a great way to handle information that needs to stay static in the how it looks state. For instance, archive data. We've been using PDFs for so long and going back to remediate all of those older PDFs is definitely not the answer. But going back to maybe remediate some of the newer ones may be your best bet. And as mentioned, PDFs aren't going away anytime soon. So if you are going to use a PDF, let's just make sure we set your user up for success. So how do we set our users up for success with PDFs? Well, if your format doesn't need to be a PDF, do not force it to be. Creating a basic HTML page, for example, is a much better use of time and resources. If you must link to a PDF, at least let the user know the link is going to an external resource. This is just as easy as adding PDF to the end of your link. For example, let's say we had Atten's webinar schedule link on our site. You would click this thinking it's taking you to an HTML page with a full list of the schedule, but really it's taking you to a PDF file. By just adding PDF to the end of your descriptive link here, the user knows that they're actually going to a PDF. That way, if they need to, if they don't have the resources to listen to it via screen reader or anything, they have the ability to maybe reach out to Atten to get a, an appropriate accessible version of the schedule. Overall, the community recommends avoiding or minimizing the use of PDF files as a sole source of online information. You, if you can, include alternative sources along with the PDF that may be a bit easier to digest, like an HTML page that portrays the same information, or even just includes a slight teaser on why the user should access this PDF. And finally, use programs like Adobe Acrobat Pro to enhance your PDF through tagging, reading order, alternative text, and so on. So let's talk about creating accessible PDFs. So what makes a PDF accessible? What's different from web accessibility? Well, they basically follow the same guidelines to a point as a website. The goal is to pretty much make your PDF read like a web page. We need to make sure our content follows the basic accessibility guidelines, such as things like strong contrast. And it isn't just about text color on a solid background. We also wanna be mindful of contrast with text over images, for example. We also wanna follow a semantic structure with headings and tables and lists. We never wanna use paragraph style to look like headings, similar to websites. Remember to always use the appropriate heading structure. And don't forget to be mindful of your links and buttons in your PDF and never use phrases like click here or learn more. You should always be using descriptive links. Now this can all seem kind of tough because well, it's not a web page and it isn't built with the same structure. So we need to approach this a little different. Obviously, some of this can be accomplished by great design and common sense, but a majority of the technical improvements are accomplished through, well, something like Microsoft Word. Because when creating accessible PDFs, just like websites, it's always best to start from the very beginning with a source file. So you should ideally start with something like Word, if possible. It's one of the most popular tools out there for creating PDFs. It has wonderful overall accessibility that continues to improve with each new version. There are other programs out there. I know some people may use things like InDesign or Photoshop, but because this is the most popular, we're going to focus on this one. So a few great reasons why Word is a great place to start is because it includes almost all the information necessary for an accessible PDF, such as headings, alternative text, contrast, table structure, and so on. It also includes the option to automatically create alternative text for images and surprisingly does a pretty good job. You'll have to go in and maybe tweak the wording or mark as decorative, but it definitely gives you a great place to start. And it includes an accessibility checker within the software to help you repair issues as you are creating the document. So let's talk about content creation. As mentioned, when we create content for a PDF, we need to make sure we follow the normal guidelines as if we were creating for the web here are a few items to pay particular attention to. We want to find out about our layout uh, as early on as possible. We need a one column versus a two column. Is it extremely intricate? And ideally, we want to make them as simple as possible. The more intricate, the more manual testing and logic will need to apply, be applied. And the higher chance your PDF just isn't usable. 
We also want to focus on semantics. We should not be styling paragraphs to look like a heading. I will say this so many times. I'm sorry that you'll probably get sick of it, but do not do that. Just like a website, we want to make sure a heading two is structurally a heading two, a list is a list, and so on. And finally, make sure to include alternative text when it's necessary. Word has a great feature to help you with this. And as always, don't forget to pay attention to color contrast, color reliance, log logical order, and anything of that sort in manual testing to make sure your PDF is as, is as accessible as possible. So let's take a look at adding semantic structure and focusing a little bit on layout. So you can see here, I'm on a blank document. We're gonna go over to insert and we can go to text box and we can draw a text box. In this example, we're gonna do a two thirds layout here. So we have the one third empty and two thirds here. We're gonna add in a title, highlight that and go back to the home tab here. And here we can see we've labeled it as a heading one. However, it doesn't exactly look how we want it to. So if you go to the styles pane, you can actually modify the style or create a new style based on the heading one structure. We've already created one called heading atten, so we're just gonna use that based off of the heading one. And that looks a lot better. Next, we can just add in a little bit more content. We'd highlight that and make sure we assign that to the correct heading or the correct semantic structure that we're using and maybe change the style as necessary. You would keep moving forward, just setting up the content until you're satisfied with what you have overall. So now let's take a look at adding in images and how Word works with alternative text. Just for this example here, we're not gonna focus necessarily on layout, but just how the alternative text will work with the images. So with that, we'll make sure we go over to insert, and this time we're going to add a picture. So we're gonna use a picture from a file that I already have. We're gonna insert in the doc. You can see it added it very nicely, and if you hover over that image, you can see there's actually already alternative text in the bottom. But it doesn't exactly look like the way we want it to. It doesn't look accurate. So we're going to right click and edit the alt text. It actually brings up this pane over here and you can see it actually says description automatically generated. Here's where you can actually just tweak it to make it work. You can see here it says a group of people sitting and looking at the camera. They're clearly not looking at a camera. However, it is actually finding out exactly what it's looking at. It's a group of people maybe looking at a lecture. So you can tweak that as needed. And I've used this with a lot of options. I've even done some silly ones with my dog and they actually do a pretty good job. Their AI is pretty on point for that one. However, if there is an image that maybe the screen reader doesn't need to read because it's just contextual or maybe just for design, you can mark as decorative. And that way the screen reader will skip it entirely. And once we have all the content set up how we want, we wanna make sure we check the document with accessibility checker before we save. So here's an example of using the accessibility checker. So what we're gonna do is, this is an example of a finished one that we have. We'll go to tools and then check accessibility. It opens up this pane on the right here with a list of errors. If you click on one of these errors, it will highlight where it is on the left so you know what it's in regard to, and it will tell you actually why you need to fix it as well as how to fix it. But just like any other automated tools, there could be some false errors. So this one, because we use the layout option, there's going to be a lot of options that say that it's not in line. And that just has to do with um, the fact that you use the text boxes instead of just one whole text area. So this will have to, you'll have to use some manual testing to make sure that this is using logical order and Adobe Acrobat Pro to make sure that that order is actually implemented. And that's it. You keep moving forward with your content and keep the accessibility checker open the whole time and it will actually find the errors in real time. And when you have this completed to your best of your ability, you can actually save it. But we need to make sure we save it correctly. So here you would go to File, Save As, and we'd mark it as a PDF. The most important of this save is we wanna make sure it's saved for electronic distribution and accessibility. If that is not marked off, it will not save your tags, it will not save your semantic structure, won't save your alternative text and so on. So you need to make sure that that is correctly. So we finished our Word doc, but now we have to make sure everything is tagged correctly. So let's talk a little bit about Acrobat. Acrobat Pro is the most commonly used program to evaluate, repair, and enhance the accessibility of existing PDF files. This is extremely useful for checking your work after it was created in a text editor like Microsoft Word, as well as alleviating issues from previously created PDFs. 
So we've heard a lot about how we want to focus on making it read like a web page, but really, what does that mean? How does this make a PDF accessible? Well, as you know, the goal is to pretty much make your PDF read like a web page, and we can accomplish this by tagging and setting up a reading order. Tagging helps assign certain structural elements to content. This means making sure a heading one is read as a heading one, a two is a two, a list is a list, a form as a form, and so on. And along with tagging, we need to make sure the PDF is read in the order it was actually intended. Just because it looks like it will be read left to right and up and down doesn't mean that it actually will. Most likely, if you do not revise the reading order, the elements will be read in the order that they were created on the page originally in your text editor. A good example I like to use with this one is maybe you created your footer first and then you realize that you didn't have your logo in the left-hand corner, so then you added your logo after. If you don't change the reading order, Adobe will actually read it as your footer and then go to your logo, which is kind of confusing for a lot of users. That captures a lot of the basics of what makes a PDF accessible. With that, now we can work on steps to create an accessible PDF. We can accomplish this by following these steps. We can set up our workspace correctly to help enhance your accessibility experience. We can use the accessibility checker supplied by Acrobat. We can add and update the appropriate tags on the page. And we can evaluate and improve the reading order. So let's talk a little bit about setting up your workspace in your document. There are two main objectives to this step. We want to enable the accessibility plugin as a shortcut in your toolbar. And we want to include a document title and assign a language. Before we really dive in, I wanted to show a screenshot of what Acrobat looks like to a user. I know not everyone has access to this currently. So if we look here, you're going to see on the right hand side that gets highlighted. This is the shortcut bar. This is where you'll add any of the shortcuts needed. Right now, if you look all the way to the bottom, the accessibility one is actually highlighted. Next are the various actions you can take for the shortcut that you are currently on. In this instance, like I said, we're on the accessibility shortcut, so these are the actions we can take for that shortcut. And finally, the left sidebar is also just to dive in even deeper to accompany the current shortcut that we're on. So let's take a look at adding the shortcut to our toolbar here. So what you would do is you would scroll down, you'd see it's not there, so we would choose more tools. This will pop up a little window and you can either search up there, or I know where it is, so I scrolled down and I added it straight to the toolbar here. Add shortcut, we can go back to our document and you can see it's currently in our shortcut bar. And now that we have this set up correctly, we wanna set up our document title and our language. So what we would do is we come up here to File and Properties. Under this Description tab, this is where we would add the title. This is similar to like the title of a website, just so the screen reader gets a little more um, description on what's going on. And then we also want to assign a language here. And in this case, we want to assign English. And with that, we can say OK. And now we are set up and can begin enhancing the PDF. So just like the web, PDFs have some automated testing tools for you to use to check accessibility. Acrobat has a great built-in tool for finding any major errors. And now that everything is set up correctly, we want to start assessing the document. We need to find out what was done incorrectly in order to fix it. So let's take a look at the accessibility checker. We choose the accessibility shortcut here, and there's a bunch of options, but we're really just going to focus on this full check one here that will open up this pane. We also have the ability to download the report once done, and then we can turn off to different items there, but we're gonna kind of choose everything so we can see all the errors. It brings up in the left-hand column all the issues that we may have found on the site or on the PDF here. Reminder that similar to automated testing tools on websites, this isn't 100%, and manual checks will also need to be involved, but this will get you most of the way there. So let's take a look at some of the errors that we've found. So if you open this up, you can actually see it tells you what has passed, but also some of the errors. So to fix these, you can right click, and you can choose fix. That one can automatically tag the rest of the PDF, which is awesome for us. However, you can see that we are missing some alternative text. So you can click on that to find out exactly which one you're missing, and then right click and you can change it as needed. Here you can mark as decorative if you want the screen reader to skip it, or you can include the alternative text 
that's needed for that image. So in this case, it would probably just be at me. This is a great place to start looking at what's wrong and start alleviating some of those issues. Ideally, we would go through and find all the issues and probably prioritize and start making a plan and repairing those issues. Next, we need to start focusing on adding and updating tags. We had this auto tag the document in this last video. As mentioned, this is a great start. I recommend using the auto tag feature and then make necessary changes after. That way you won't miss anything. It is better to be tagged incorrectly than not to be tagged at all. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So now that the auto tag is complete, let's take a look at how to update these. So we're gonna update some of the tags we found. So here we would go over to the left column and choose that icon. And you can see here, there's a list of items. We have sections, heading ones, headings threes, figures, and so on. If you click on heading one, for example, you can see it highlighted in the right hand side in the actual document. But let's say one of these is um, tagged incorrectly. So you would open it up and right click on the uh, incorrect one and go down to properties. Here we'll bring up this new item here and you can actually change it. Maybe that list site is supposed to be within a table or maybe it's just a paragraph or maybe it's new heading. This is where you would change that to be done correctly. Now we can move on to reading order. This is important because we wanna make sure the screen reader is reading the page in a logical way. Here, we're gonna take a look on reading order. And in the left-hand column, we'll choose the reading order icon. You can see here, you see all the numbers, you can see what's assigned to what, and that's actually the order it will be read in as of now. But let's say some of this is incorrect and you need to change that. We well, have the ability to actually just click on it and drag and drop to be in the correct order that you're expecting. And then that way the reading order will be a little bit better. If you come back over here and choose the reading order and the action items, you actually have the ability to draw a rectangle around the content and then you can assign it, maybe there's three lines for a heading one, but you wanted them all to be styled differently. That way you can group it all as one heading and be read together. And remember, the reading order tool displays the content order of the PDF, not the tag order. While the goal is to get the content and the tag order to match the visual order, the tag order takes priority in accessibility repairs. But oh no, what if my PDF says it's all one image? Don't worry about it, I see this all the time. There are really two things we wanna do here to fix this. We want to um, check for the source files, and then we want to enhance the scans. Before you do anything at all, you want to try and find the original source files of the PDF. This could be maybe a Word doc, an InDesign document, or anything of that sort. This is the best place to update your PDF from an image to text elements. This way you can export it the way it needs to be exported to be read appropriately by a screen reader. However, I know, I know, I know, I know. Locating these source files, especially for very old documents, is pretty much impossible. So Adobe has an enhanced scans options, which will do its best to translate the image to the text that is visually shown. It's not 100% accurate, but it does a pretty darn good job. Um, and that keeps you from having to recreate the document overall. So let's take a look at this video here. I'm going to click on the document. And you can see the whole thing is highlighted and that's because it's currently an image. So what we wanna do is we wanna to go to scan and OCR tool over there. You can enhance, we wanna recognize in this file, and then you would assign the settings that you need and click the recognize text option. What's great is that if it's pretty simple, it will actually find all the text, and you can see it's pretty accurate overall. Again, you may have to um, update any of the text that's incorrect if you need to, but overall does a pretty good job. And then from here, you would then follow the steps from before to enhance the PDF with the accessibility checker, tagging, and logical order. Using the knowledge of when it's appropriate to create and use PDFs and how to better the experience of the user, you will be able to take your digital experience to the next level. So thanks everyone. And I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna come out of here and I will show my face for the first time today. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Hello everyone. <Thanks. laughs> Sweet. Well, we've had some good questions come in uh, while you're talking, so I'm just going to go down in the order they were received. Um, if uh, if uh, you were the one who asked the question and um, uh, it, it, 
the you have a follow up, please uh, uh, reach out to me in the chat. Um, and if if it if it becomes a conversation, we'll just we will uh, we'll open up uh, to a dialogue. That being said, let's start with um, question number one that came in. You mentioned print style sheets for printing HTML pages as documents. Can you go into a little more detail about what we should do there? Yes. So regarding that, I think when we send our follow up email as well, I will we'll definitely include a basic default that I tend to work with when I create my print style sheets. But what we do is we set it so that um, most of the time I make it black and white just because printing in that sense is pretty simple. Um, but let's say most of our websites probably have multiple columns. We want to get rid of and just basically do a display none on a header, footer, probably some sidebar items and secondary menus that aren't needed, maybe for banner items and so on. Because if someone's printing the page, they most likely just need the content that's found on the page. Hopefully that answers your question. Great. Um, if there's, if again, if, if you have follow-up questions, please just raise your hand uh, and I will, I will uh, come, come get, come get you. Um, another question uh, comes from uh, Jessica. Uh, one of the errors I encounter is that I get an error for other, this is a, this seems to be a, a an Acrobat UI question. Uh, one of the errors I encounter when I get an error for other figures that don't have alternative tags, uh, uh, but I can't add alternative tags. So it seems like that there's an issue about an accessibility error that's being thrown for not having an alternative text on an image, but there doesn't seem to be a place to put that alternative text in. Um, so, so Jessica, if I butch hmm. butchered your question, please let me know. <laughs> but I think that's what I, under I read it as. So I'm not too sure how to answer this without necessarily seeing exactly how it would be done. I'm assuming it would just be a matter of doing the right click, as I had mentioned, and usually you have to fix, and then that would actually, when you right click and you do the fix option, is when the alternative text box will actually appear. However, if this is something that you want to go into more detail about, that's something you can definitely reach out to me personally, and maybe we can kind of clarify that together. Fantastic. So another question, uh, same person. Uh, oh, excuse me. It's not the alternative. You know what? Uh, um, uh, let's see. It's not the alternative. It was a clarifying uh, question. It's uh, not the alternative text for figures, but for other figures. Um, yeah, I think this would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just want to. I don't want to. I don't want to put. I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but. Uh, if it's okay to unmute you, I would love to just have make this a, a dialogue. Fantastic, awesome. So I'm going to. Uh, hi, Jessica. This is. Uh, you should be able to talk now. We should be able to hear you. All right. Well, we worked out that audio. I'm going to move on to a question from Ellie, which is, what recommendations do you have for open textbook formats other than PDFs? Open textbook formats other than PDFs. I would say EPUB 3 is definitely my recommended version for most instances there, mostly because it's free. You don't have to worry about anything else that's going on there. A lot of PDFs for it to be read with um, screen readers, as mentioned, they have to be read within Adobe Acrobat Pro. And it's not really fair for people to have to, um, to pay for that option. So if you have the ability to use the EPUB 3, that's what I would say to export it as, just because then you have that kind of open instance there that's um, a cheaper version and it's constantly being updated. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, let's see, as a question from Normo, uh, she's wondering why you use separate text boxes in the Word file. Is it less complicated to use a single text box and use formatting for indents, et cetera? Um, I think it was just more so for this example to show the errors that can appear that aren't necessarily real errors. However, you whatever works for you is obviously going to be the best bet. I tend to actually use InDesign for a lot of PDFs that I create just because I am technically a designer from before. However, I know a lot more people are a little more fluent in Microsoft Word, so it's a little bit easier for them to set it up as needed. Um, so there is no benefit for doing it in one column versus that besides those false errors. But as long as you're paying attention to, paying attention to the manual audit, you should be fine. 
Great. Uh, Jessica, we, we should have unmuted you by now. I'm just curious if you can, if you're able to speak. So we can follow up on that question. If you're speaking, I'm so sorry, we we're unable to hear you. Maybe we should follow up with you uh, after, after the webinar. Uh, I have another question um, uh, from Jessica, which is, uh, she manages a digital repository, which is all PDFs or and images. Uh, all of the documents, um, are, there are no Word documents in there, and she's encountering accessibility issues when she runs uh, an accessibility check on older PDFs. Uh, is there a resource uh, for how to fix these advanced issues? And it also sounds like there's, uh, this is an issue where you have multiple documents that need to be updated. Yeah, I think this one's going to be a tough one just because it's going to be a lot of manual work overall. I'm sure that there are companies out there that would actually do this as a, like a bulk upload and then kind of do all the accessibility remediation from there. However, obviously, if you're looking to not spend that kind of money, it's just a matter of having to go through and do, doing that enhanced scan option that I was talking about. But I think the hardest part with all that, sorry, I just had to plug my computer back in if you heard that, um, was is just going to be going through everything and enhancing all those scans and changing it as needed. So unfortunately, there's no quick and easy way to do it. It could be a little tedious, but it's definitely something you can do to update. The other option is if people, if you don't have the option to create all these accessible PDFs, if you can even just contact, have contact information for someone to maybe reach out to and then maybe get an accessible version of just the one they're looking for, that may be able to save you time in the long run and then, or the short term, and then you should be able to still give them an accessible version. I know it's an extra step, but being that resource and making it known that you know that these aren't accessible, I think would be important to be able to change that going forward. Great. Um, I have a, uh, another question in the queue, which is, you mentioned print style sheets for printing HTML pages as documents. Can you go into a little more detail about what we should do there? I think we did that one. Oh, I'm sorry. Did we do this one? I apologize. Uh, this is a, uh, oh my goodness. So apology. My apologies. Um, We've also, I can actually go in a little bit more detail about that one as well. Um, so we do the print style sheets, but some of the things that we do here at Atten as well is we have the web page done correctly. And then obviously someone can go back to that. Or we also use other programs. Please forgive me that I in blanking on all of the names of the programs, which basically takes a screenshot of the page that they're currently on and creates, converts that into a PDF. And then that way you can print it and not have to worry about any kind of page load or anything like that. The, we recommend that in a way as well, because as long as there is a page that they can still go to, then that's the accessible version. And the part that you're getting that screenshot on of to download is just that print version that maybe you need for your records and your files or something. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry for asking the wrong question. It was a, what do you recommend for our organization who uh, can't afford to pay for the suite of Adobe tools? So you can actually just pay for the Adobe Acrobat Pro only as a, um, I think that's the only one that I have technically. So, and, but the downfall also is that there really are no other great options because if you're thinking about people who are constantly reading um, any kind of PDF, usually when you click on it on your website, it will actually have you open it up in Acrobat and that is for accessibility reasons. Um, however, this is something I would love to get more information on and if there are other panelists out there that have any, have used any other free options or maybe some um, can recommend some. I would love to hear them. I just haven't found any good ones that have worked consistently with other screen readers, unfortunately. Uh, no, I don't have, I, I <laughs> the first person I, I reach out to is you when I have a question about this. So um, I have a, a question and I swear uh, I did not ask this question, but is Atten available for consulting on accessibility? And the answer is of course, yes, is something that we do. I'm more than happy to follow up with each of you after that, um, with the person who asked this question after this, uh, after the webinar. Um, that is the last question I have in the queue. I, I think um, uh, since uh, if there are any, if, if anybody on this call is anything like me, you'll have 15 questions, 15 minutes from now. Uh, more than happy to answer any of them. Uh, I will be following up with everybody on this call shortly 
uh, with uh, just a just a wrap up email. Uh, with that, I'm going to um, I'm going to share my screen and I will uh, close out this webinar. Uh, so let me just do exactly that. So uh, we have one last thing to talk about uh, today, which is um, as I mentioned at the top of the call, this is the first in our webinar series. Uh, oh, hang on, I think I might be sharing all kinds of Zoom artifacts too on top of my screen. Um, this is the first webinar in our series. Uh, we are doing another one two weeks from now, and we'd love it all if you, all of you could save the date. On Wednesday, April 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, we will be doing uh, a developer-focused um, webinar with, about integrating Drupal and React. This is uh, our, our uh, React and Gatsby expert, Brent Robbins, will be uh, doing this. Uh, uh, will be hosting this talk. It's gonna be a fantastic talk. We really would love it if each of you could be there and you can register for uh, Brent's webinar here. Um, I have one, it's something coming into the chat right now. Uh-oh. And we are really, uh, thank you very much for everybody for being here today. I will be following up, uh, sending an email with a recording of this webinar along with some resources. Um, and a survey. We really want to iteratively improve our webinars going forward, and we really value your feedback uh, after today's uh, webinar to, to do just that. So thank you very much, everybody, for uh, making some time to join us today. And uh, again, I'll follow up with everybody later so we can continue the conversation online. Thanks again.